Hi! In this video, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of using a framework such as Entity to access your database. My name is Shad Sluter, and it's my job to make uh, programming easier. I teach at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of using Entity Framework or other object mapping uh, frameworks. So the main idea behind Entity with Microsoft C Sharp is that we can let the programmer write shorter and simpler statements in their code and still access the database like they would if they would have to write SQL statements. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. In the top line here, you can see an example of how to select all employees from a database. It's pretty much one line. We have to say, um, tell me context.employee, and that will return an entire list. The alternative, of course, if you've learned C uh, any kind of SQL, is that you would have to write the select statement and then create a loop inside of your function and then build a list and return it. So traditional SQL queries. They each have their advantages and we'll talk about those next. So the word ORM or the initials ORM stand for Object Relational Mapper. And here's the idea. Starting on the right side here with these little green boxes, we have classes. So you understand classes have properties and methods, but we're pretty much interested in the properties. So the person property has a name and a phone number. These map directly to the tables in the database. So when you do a SQL query, you can map one to the other. And so in traditional SQL programming, you have to tell it which one's mapped to which. With an object relational mapper, all of that's done in one line of code. So if your database matches your classes, no problem. As a matter of fact, the ORM will let you create the objects first and then with one command we'll create a table that matches up perfectly with your classes. So there's a common misconception though that if the database is created for you and all the SQL statements are written for you then I no longer have to learn SQL. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, SQL is really not that fun for a lot of programmers. But that is a misconception because everything works until it doesn't and then you better know your SQL. So don't be caught off guard to think that just because you use an object mapper that you've avoided taking the database class or having to learn it, you will end up using it eventually. There are strong opinions on both sides here. So the people that I talk to that are professional developers um, I fall on both sides. Uh, recruiters that come to the campus at Grand Canyon University looking for employees would say, well, of course we want entity or we want hibernate. We, we need students to know these ORMs. But then others have said, oh, never, never. Our company would never allow this. And so there's strong opinions on each side. So make sure that you're prepared. The uh, ORMs are very easy to work with once you see the code, but then they can lead to problems down the road if your applications are in an enterprise environment or your application starts to get more complex than the simple CRUD apps that you would use in class. So make sure that you know what they are, but be aware that there are problems that can arise. ORMs come with many names. So if you are working with C Sharp, you're going to be talking about the Entity Framework. In Java, the word is Hibernate. And if you happen to be using PHP, Eloquent is the object mapper that you'll be using. I suppose there are other frameworks and other different types of ORMs, but these are three that you might come across it if you're a student here at Grand Canyon University. So let's talk about some benefits of the ORM. So you've already seen that code is simple. You don't have to write very much of it. Uh, you also can automatically generate your database. So a simple uh, authentication in, um, let's say, MVC, if you're writing a, a web page in C Sharp, uh, authentication is done really in one line. You create a uh, one line of code. It will generate your uh, login forms, your registration forms, your forgot my password form, all kinds of things that are done for you. Also, you would think that uh, your SQL statements are written for the programmer, so you might not have to write them. And then, of course, there's security issues. So a lot of ORMs uh, bundle these uh, prepared statements for you, so you don't have to create them and remember them. So 
there's a lot of good benefits to an ORM. Now Entity, along with other ORMs, will automatically generate your data tables for you. Now this also is nice if you change a property in your model and you update it. Let's say instead of phone number you wanted to add another property called zip code, you would uh, type update the database and zip code now shows up in the table. Now this would indicate that there's great flexibility, but you might also argue to say why are you modifying your models? Didn't you design them correctly at the very beginning? And that might show that you are not a well-designed programmer, you're just kind of inventing code as your application evolves. And of course, uh, if you're that kind of a developer, then you deserve to have problems if your uh, database changes. So let's talk about several reasons why your database admin, or known as your DBA, why he might hate your application. Uh, he or she would say, I've got data and I know what to do with it, and your application is accessing my database as a service. You don't own the database. I am providing you a service, so make sure you follow my rules. So database administrators often or sometimes will not even allow such things in the code in the company's programs. So you might not have a choice. Now DBAs would like to treat their database similar to how you would as a programmer treat your APIs. So you know an API is a manner where you can provide an endpoint to say uh, you can collect all the users from my application and I'll provide you a JSON text response. So an API is a front-end service. And what you do in the back end is pretty much up to you of how you want to provide that to them. The DBAs have views and they create access to their database similar to how you create access to your objects in an API. And so it's an abstraction layer. And D DBAs want to have that so that they have the flexibility of modifying things in the background and still providing the exact same front end service to the programmers that they did before. So what does a view look like? So a database view would look like this. So let's say we want a query called uh, popular books. And you can see that uh, this query is a SQL statement that says we're going to get everything from the books table and we're going to have only the books that are labeled as popular as uh, part of the return string. So once we've written this view called popular books, then you can access it just like you would a table. So you can say select the items from popular books. And so popular books is really a SQL statement in the background. Now let's say that the DBA goes and monkeys around with popular books later and changes it to you know, a different statement. The programmer that uses the view would never know. Now the problem with this is that DBAs don't like to have their views short-circuited. So an ORM might not treat the view like uh, give it a due respect. So in the previous example, this uh, diagram is how it would work. We want to uh, select the uh, things from popular books. And the ORM might just say, hey, I want the author and I'm going straight to the database and I'm going, going to ignore any views that the DBAs have already created. And so it would be similar to having an object, uh, instead of getting to the properties and methods using getters and setters, uh, you just said, hey, I'm going to make everything public and the uh, other items in the application can access properties directly. And of course, that would not be a good thing if you're trying to provide limited access to the items in your class. And so DBAs like the views and they don't want you to bypass them. So another criticism of ORMs is their performance. So let's say you have an ORM that accesses your data like this. It says open, access a little bit of data, close the database. Open, close, open, close, open, close. And that's not going to work so well. Instead, if you designed a SQL statement correctly that says, hey, let's open the database and perform several sequential operations and then close it, that obviously is going to be better performing. And so the ORM might uh, write code like the first case or it might write le code like the second place. Now, if you are a good um, programmer and you understand the ORM, you're probably going to be able to avoid this problem. So another issue is that the um, ORM might open a database connection and leave it open for a while. And that obviously uh, prevents other systems from accessing or other tasks from as as accessing the data. And so that could slow down your system. Now the DBA 
has a responsibility to make the database work. Unfortunately, the programmers can get in the middle and muck it all up. And guess who gets to blame? Well, the DBAs get called in the middle of the night and they say the database doesn't work or the database is slow. And they inevitably look into the system and they say, yeah, there's a query running from some program that was not uh, correctly formatted. And so then they call the programmer and say, it's your fault. And so the DBA doesn't like to get blamed. And so at the uh, policy setting, they might say, hey, we're not going to let you use these ORMs because I don't want to get called at 3 a.m. When, when the database is down. So usually another problem occurs is that everything looks great in your production system. And then uh, you put it under heavy load in, in the uh, real world, and then uh, you know, performance drops. And guess who's at the desk sweating with the uh, pressure on? The DBA says, I'm trying to find out where the problem lies and I don't want to have issues surprise me. So don't provide me with sloppy code. So just to know that uh, ORMs can make bad code, but humans are just as capable or maybe more so. So SQL statements, just because they're written out by a programmer, don't necessarily make them better. You can do it badly either way. Um, another issue that ORMs can do is if you don't write them correctly is you might see that uh, if I want to get all users from the table and it just takes me one line of code, you might just do that. You say select all users and put them in a list and then I'm going to go through that list and filter the list or sort it out or something. Well that takes a lot of memory because if you're grabbing the entire list of every row in the table and then filtering it, you're, uh, you're doing a SQL statement that might be kind of sloppy. So there are techniques that you need to learn with your ORM, things like eager loading. And uh, that brings up another point, that ORMs might not eventually make your life that much better. So here's an example, um, just a piece of evidence for that argument. Here's, here's a book from Amazon, Entity Framework Core in Action. So the book is kind of like the Bible. It's the guide that tells you everything you need to know about it. The problem is, that it's a paperback book that has 520 pages and uh, it's two pounds. So have you, uh, have you found out what all the issues are? Have you, have you learned all the features of your ORM? It might take you just as long to learn all the features of the framework as it did to write the SQL statements yourself. So similar to a framework like ASP.NET MVC or Spring in Java or uh, PHP Laravel, a framework is difficult. Framework is big. There are a lot of options. And to do it right, you have to learn all those options. So frameworks don't write your code for you. They make it easier, but you have to, you have to study them. And so whether it's a programming framework for web development or it's a database uh, framework such as uh, Entity, you, you still have to read the documentation, and it might take you a long time. So, so in summary, some of the drawbacks that I've mentioned here is that... Um, Complex joins in a database query might get poor performance. And uh, you've kind of got this black box going on with an ORM where you can run the query in one line of code, but you really don't know if it's written correctly or what's going on behind the scenes. And so you, when, uh, when the problems occur, you have to open up the um, actual queries themselves to see what's going on. And so troubleshooting an ORM can be just as difficult as looking at straight SQL statements. Uh, also, at the end of the day, the company policy is really going to dictate what you do. So you might, as an independent programmer, have the choice to say, hey, I'd like an ORM or maybe not, but your boss is going to tell you what to do. And if you've got DBAs and corporate environments and you know code reviews, you probably don't have the choice of freedom of what you want to do. So if your company's using OR ORMs, then yeah, you better learn them. And if not, then well, learn to live without them. So those are some of the arguments for and against. Uh, leave your comments below to see if you've got some professional experience with or without these, and let me know how your company works. Thanks for watching.